Hi, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and in this set of videos we're going to talk about how to use your histogram. So let's start off with the very basics. This is a histogram, this graph. Generally to get it onto your screen you got to hit the play button and then you got to hit either info, display, uh, some cameras like Nikons, you got to push up or down, sometimes left or right on your display panel, and sometimes you even have to turn it on in the menu so that it does show up. But the best thing I can tell you is you definitely want to be able to see it. It's something that you should use just about every time you take a picture with a digital camera. So this is how you use it. If you look at this graph on the back, you'll see it on the back of your screens, you'll see it on editing software. This graph tells you that the very left side is black, the very right side is white. And the reason that's important is this is what the camera can see. If you take a picture, it sometimes may be touching the edges and that's telling you that, hey, I, as the camera, I can't see what we're looking at. Sometimes that's what you want, but a lot of times that's not what you want. So a lot of people may understand that. You don't touch the edges of the histogram. To adjust that, you you're going to adjust that through exposure adjustments, either exposure or compensation, depending on your settings. But there's generally a wheel that you're going to adjust with your thumb. Sometimes you have to hold down a button uh, that looks like a plus slash minus and you roll to, rotate that to the darker side or the lighter side to adjust the whole histogram. So as you make an adjustment to the dark side, the histogram will move if you take the same exact same picture. So let's actually put together what's going on with this histogram. So we know this is pure black, we know this is pure white. Is there any pure white or pure black in this shot here? This is Lumpy Ridge and Estes Park, really neat rock formation of the Twin Owls. It's a cool spot uh, in the wintertime. And winter is the key here because winter is very kind of boring with colors. We've got tan grass, we've got green trees, we've got some grayish tan rocks, and we got a blue sky. Very mundane standard you know, weather for uh, Estes Park. But let's how do you get that right shot? How do you know that this is correct? So the way you do it is you sort of break it down. Uh, it, it goes Using a histogram goes a lot more into depth than just saying, okay, don't touch the edges. We want to make sure everything is just about as good as we can get it so that we do get home and start to edit our pictures. We have the best data possible. So let's see about how we interpret what all this stuff is going on right here. So we're going to start from the from the right side and work to the left. So the first thing is over here. This is this is white, so this better be pretty bright. So what's the brightest thing in our picture? And that's definitely the grass. So let's take a picture of the, just of the grass. So if you look at this shot, you can see that this spike goes very far over to the right hand side. It's about three quarters uh, of the way over. And that's in an area where you'll find that tan generally resides. It's going to, on a Nikon camera, it's going to reside uh, in the, the right hand side of the third column. On a, on a Canon, it's going to be between the third and the fourth column. Pardon me, the, the fourth and the fifth column. So when you take a look at it, this is, this is showing a lot of detail. The more spread out a histogram is, the more different colors. So when you look at any one histogram, it's going to change for every single picture. But this is how really your camera exposes things. Is it's not when it's in focus, but when it blurs it out. This is what the camera's really looking at when it looks at the exposure settings and what should it use. So the tan grass, you can see different color variations here, but for the most part, it's kind of a lighter to medium color tone, but definitely lighter, especially down here and up through here. So light is going to be towards the right side of middle. If you go back to the first videos, we talk about how do you use the um, the exposure meter and 18% gray. So let's go back to the main shot here. So here's our shot. So here's that lump. This is our tan grass, and tan should be somewhere right around here. So that's good. When you look at a histogram, when you have a spike or a high peak, what that's really telling you is you have a lot of one sort of color. So down there, that's definitely our lighter color. That's this. So let's look at the next part. Now we got some medium bright stuff here. So that's probably the rocks. We move over to the rocks. Yeah, look at where this spike goes up. It kind of goes just to the right of middle. And if you look at this in a blurred version, you see that there's there's sort of grays and tans, but it's it's brighter than 18% gray, so it should be right of middle. And look where that spike is just in that tone. So let's look at the sky. Sky can change from, it, sometimes the histogram can be all the way over here if it's really dark blue. Sometimes it'll be really over here if it's really light blue. But this was a very average medium sky around the late in the afternoon, and it was just blue. And blue, you know, really medium blue should be right darn in the middle. So take a look at the picture again. There's our histogram. This is middle, so this is this is a bit of this is sky. We know that's the rock. That's our our uh, our grass. 
So there's got to be some dark stuff. This is a big spike. So this is one that's really important, especially if you're going to photograph in the Rocky Mountains, because this is where trees in sunlight, evergreens in sunlight, are generally going to show up. You want to have your spike right in here. So on a Nikon, that's going to be in the second column, just about dead center. On a Canon, that's going to be um, on the right-hand side of the second column to the close to the, to the third column line. And that's where you want your trees. You want your trees to be green. So you take a look. So we don't have just a spike here, but we also have some area over here. That's all these shadow areas that are darker. We don't have hardly anything that's bright, so those so shadow areas are very important. If you look at this again in the blurred side, you know it's just a flat grayish medium green, and that's exactly where this spike is. So check a, take a look when we look at the back of the picture. There's our picture. There was where our spike was, and because this ha this picture has to share all the different colors, green isn't making up the whole shot. Just a portion here through the trees. It's right there. So then this has to be everything else. It has to be the shadows. So there's shadows here, and there's some dark areas, dark areas along the fence. That's not touching the edge. So that's another thing to think about is generally on uh, both a Nikon and a Canon, that first column is where your shadows are. And you want generally some detail in your shadows. So let's take a, that and apply it to even uh, more broad idea. Let's take a look at this shot. This is very, you know, it's not a good shot by any means. It's pretty boring. But what it really comes down to is there's there's just a few tonalities. We've got the, the green evergreens. We've got evergreens in really dark shade. We've got sort of more distant evergreens that fade and, again, more fading sort of this bluish green color out here. We've got snow and shade, and we got snow and sunlight, and we got the blue sky. So each one of these spikes correlates to those elements. So let's break it down real quick. So here's our, our spike of trees. You know, So there's right here where it should be about a third of the way in. There's our dark trees, which are way off to the left. You know, that's definitely close, but we're not touching the edge because we don't want them black. So we'll go back to that point. So there's there's our dark trees. This is our spike of the green trees. But then we got this anomaly anomaly here. What's that? That's probably going to be this area right here. So let's confirm that. So we'll break it down. We'll zoom in and crop the picture. And yep, that's exactly it. It's those out of focus kind of blurred blue-green trees. So we've got some other areas. We've got this shady snow, and the snow, you can see where it sort of lines up in this area. So we go back to the main picture, we do have this little tiny spike. You can see it doesn't make up much of the picture at all, and there's a lot of variations, so why it's more spread out and not a tall spike. And then we've got some other areas. So we've got sky, and we also got the snow and the mixed rocks. So let's take a look at the mixed rocks. It's kind of all over the place. We've got really, really brights, which are over here, almost touching the edge. And then we've got sort of a mixture. We've got snow and shade, which we know would be right here, and we get a little bit of sky. And there's sort of a lot of stuff on the bright side of this whole histogram, so that's all right in here. And then we've got the sky. So this sky was very light blue, was really close to the horizon. And it falls right in here, about uh, three-fourths of the way across the histogram. So we'll go back to that main shot, and there it is. There's our, that's definitely our sky. So this is the basics of using a histogram, what it really means. Spikes means you have a lot of one color. And what's really cool with a histogram is you can move it. If you take a picture and you take the exact same picture and adjust your exposure compensation, your plus minus adjustment to meter it darker or brighter, you can take different tonalities of the same exact thing. So here's tan grass. We know about our tan grass. We've talked about it here. We know it's going to be on the right hand side, but not touching the edge. But look at all the different to tones and the colors we can make by just underexposing. And as we underexpose it, we're just going to go brighter and brighter. I'm, I'm making adjustments on the exposure compensation with each different picture here. And look at how that histogram keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And, you know, that might be grass in a shady time. You know, maybe the sun's not quite out. You know, this might be even better for that time period. But, you know, if the sun's out, you know, our grass should be somewhere around there. And that's what that's what it looked like in reality. If you keep going brighter, you can still make things brighter. And our big enemies are the blinkies. We're going to start getting some areas that are just pure white. So you can go far too bright. And that's what this all comes down to. So just to overview what you're going to look at anytime you take a picture. Like this is horrible light. This is really challenging. So you want to look at the things. What do you use to meter to make the best exposure? So we got a really tall dark spike. What is that? That's got to be our dark trees. And we've got this medium, so that's probably our sky and a lot of this area here. And we've got medium snow all throughout here, so that's some of this. 
And then we've got some really, really bright stuff right through here. That's all touching the edge. So this is a really challenging shot. But remember, just because it looks like that snow down below, you see the snow down in the shade, just because it's medium doesn't mean you have to expose it to be medium. Maybe you want that snow to be brighter. And you can make the whole thing be brighter just by manually adjusting that exposure. So the other thing to remember when you're starting off using the histogram is tonalities are going to change based off if they're in the sun or if they're in the shade. So here's a, a shot that's predominantly green, very medium, very, you know, very average in color. It's not very dark. It's not very light. And here we have a histogram that goes straight up the middle. If we blur this, you can see it. It's very just green all over. We have these different patches and it's very average. But some tones, like green, quite often stay right in the middle, even if the sun's out. So right here, you can see that our histogram spreads out a lot more because we have a lot more contrast. So it's going to depend. Your histogram's going to look different. If you take the exact same picture based off of the sun out or is it away, is the, what's the colors, what's the tonalities? And what you start to do is you start to build a mental catalog because you'll start to say, okay, bright green in the sun is going to be very close, just maybe a little left of middle if there's a lot of shadows in that. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how do you put this all together and how do you really use it, and especially for wildlife photography. So I'll see you in the next video.